Thank you. My name is Nick DiBerardino. I'm a composer. I'm the chair of composition studies here at Curtis and the director of Ensemble 2021. It is a thrill to have you all here tonight. This is a sold out crowd. And it's amazing to have this community of people here, especially after those lean years of COVID concerts where we had to be so far apart. So I want to thank you for being here. And I'm excited for you to hear this concert program tonight. So tonight's concert is called Music of Change. It's been themed around Curtis's all school project. Here at Curtis, we have this project where musical studies electives, liberal arts electives, and concerts are all themed around a single line of inquiry that allows the school to explore a topic in depth. Last year and this year, we are exploring the civil rights era and music of change. And this concert takes up that idea of music of change. The pieces you'll hear are all inspired by the fight for justice around the world. And some of them celebrate the people who have come before us to make our society a more equitable place. The first work on the program is that kind of piece. It's by Valerie Coleman, who wrote this piece for the Imani Winds. We're very proud to have them on our faculty at Curtis. And this piece celebrates the life of Josephine Baker. If you don't know Josephine Baker, she's an incredible entertainer and civil rights activist. She was the first black woman to star in a major motion picture. And she was an important force for civil rights, not just here in the States, but also abroad. She actually helped to fight the Nazi occupation in Paris, which was her home for much of her life. And here in the States, she refused to perform in segregated concert venues and was also a part of the civil rights movement here in many other ways. So I hope you enjoy that piece. You can read in your program Valerie's imagining a few moments across Josephine Baker's life in each one of these movements. If you're interested, you can read more. Uh, just a quick word before we begin. Uh, the second piece on the program is How We Prevail by Philip Manival. And Philip is here. I can't see him through this light, but he's, he's here tonight, just so you know. He's over here. Thank you for helping me welcome Philip. Uh, we can applaud for him again after we hear his piece. I'm gonna let the concert happen, that's why I'm telling you this now. So after the first piece, we'll hear Philip Manival's How We Prevail, which is a beautiful ode to uh, the human spirit and the resiliency of the human spirit in the face of the struggles of contemporary society. But first, Portraits of Josephine by Valerie Coleman. I hope you enjoy.
Another round of applause for Philip. Thank you, Philip. Beautiful music, and thanks for being here. I've been asked to speak to you again because we have a large stage change. <laughs> so here I am. Um, but it's nice to have a chance to tell you a little bit about the piece you're about to hear. Um, Ensemble 2021, as you may know by now, is Curtis's presenting series devoted to music from the 20th and 21st centuries. That's how we got our name. And Louis Andreessen was one of the most influential composers of those two centuries. He just passed away last year, and so I'm glad that we'll have a chance to hear this piece of his, which is one of his most famous. So there are many stories about Louis Andreessen that circulate in the world of composerdom because he was a very strong personality, and that personality comes across in his music. One of the things that's really remarkable remarkable about Louis Andreessen is that he found a way to weave together his political ideals with his musical ones in a way that works and is meaningful. You'll hear that in this piece tonight. This piece is called Workers' Union. The title tells you almost everything you need to know. 
but I'll tell you a little bit more anyway. So this piece uh, is an unusual one in the way it's composed. If you don't know the piece already, you may know that this work, uh, or you wouldn't know if you don't know the piece already, that this work is for any group of instruments. So part of what Louis Andreessen's trying to do is invite everyone to join the union, no matter what they might play. Uh, the other thing about this piece that's unusual is that the pitches are completely up to the performers. So Louis Andreessen writes some gestures, some vague suggestions about what to play, but the performers are given quite a bit of individual freedom in what they choose when it comes to their notes. However, there's a big catch, which is that throughout the piece, Louis Andreessen keeps the entire ensemble in exact rhythmic unison. This is actually difficult to accomplish, and um, that will become clear when you hear the kinds of rhythms that Louis Andreessen writes into this piece. But that's part of the challenge. I've heard uh, him describe the piece as a conflict between individual freedom and a kind of severe control. So that's something going on in this work. Uh, the other thing that Louis Andreessen specifies about the piece is that it should be loud. <laughs> so that gives you a sense for what you're about to hear. Um, we'll have an intermission after this piece, but I hope you'll stick around because we have one final work on the program by Eleanor Alberga. It's a beautiful piece. You don't want to miss it. Uh, but in the meantime, I hope you will enjoy Louis Andreessen's Workers' Union.
Thank you very much. Thanks for staying. I'm very excited to have you hear this final work by Eleanor Alberga. This piece is not political, but the creation of it was done deliberately to make music a more equitable place. So this piece was commissioned in 1990 by the inaugural Chard Festival of Women in Music. Eleanor Alberga is a British composer, and this work was commissioned at a time when women composers were being excluded from concert programs. This organization that commissioned the work wanted to champion the music of women, and I'm glad that we're making some progress in this respect. So this piece, as I said, not political for Eleanor Alberga, at least in its content. It came to Eleanor Alberga in a dream. So she had a dream that instead of writing notes on her manuscript paper, she was able to paint in color, directly in sound. And for Eleanor Alberga, Sun Warrior refers to the inner self and the search for light. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> 